been so long since you guys have seen a cat on my channel because I don't film facing anywhere where they can wander in and out of the background. So here's Skimbleshanks. She wanted to join me on my lap. She's just gonna do her thing, okay. So today we are going to be ranking all of the Final Destination deaths. That's pretty self-explanatory. I promised you this video a while ago and then I did the ranking all the deaths from Saw or ranking all the Saw traps rather, not all the deaths. You all seem to be a really big fan of my tier list videos, which makes me so happy because these are some of the most fun and enjoyable and some of my favorite videos to film. So we don't need to make this intro too long, so let's just get into it. But first I wanna thank Shudder for sponsoring today's video. Shudder is a premium streaming service for all things horror, thriller, and suspense and has the fastest growing collection with new horror added every single week. Their collection includes blockbuster hits, horror classics, and original and exclusive content such as Vicious Fun, The Mortuary Collection, and PG Psycho Gorman, including all the best horror documentaries and of course the hit Creepshow TV series from executive producer Greg Nicotero of The Walking Dead. I recently watched Shook on Shudder, which is a Shudder original, and it was such an entertaining movie. It's about a media star that has to participate in a series of games and complete them in order to save the people that she cares about. It's very much like Home Invasion meets Saw. It's just really good and it actually got pretty dark and it was very fun. You can stream all the best horror, thriller, and supernatural content completely ad-free on all of your devices, including iOS and Android, Xbox One, Amazon Fire TV, Roku, and Google Chromecast, all for $5.99 a month or $56.99 per year. Or of course, you can try Shutter for free for 30 days if you go to shutter.com and use my code POSSESS30. Now let's get into ranking all of the Final Destination deaths in a tier list. Now I did recently rank the Final Destination movies themselves and in that video I included my top five favorite deaths from the franchise so this will obviously include those they may not be in the top tier though because you know how I do my tiers are looking a little wonky they're a little weird in case you're new here I don't go in order um, they're semi in order you know from like good ones to bad ones but my tiers typically make no sense to a lot of people but that's okay because they're fun they're fun categories but I will link that video over here if you want more Final Destination content from me guess what I ranked the candy bars. Are you excited? Here's my ranking of candy bars. If, if you don't know what I'm talking about, this is the format or the website that I use to do my tiers. And it always starts off with candy bars. So I decided to rank them for you in case you were curious, because we always start out with candy bars. Now this is my ranking of them. Feel free to disagree in the comments. Just realized today is Wednesday and they are doing a landscaping. Okay, for top tier, this is going to be New Fear Unlocked. These are the deaths that were a cultural reset, right? They created new phobias that people just didn't realize that they had initially. My next category is going to be called Premonition Please. This means I would rather personally die the way the premonition showed me dying versus how they actually died. Like the premonition death was better. Not better in like scary, but m better to die that way. If that, does that make sense? <laughs> the third tier is excessive. Death was clearly bored today and wanted to make some drama and just go way over the top. It's very unnecessary, just why? This tier will be unmemorable. It's pretty self-explanatory, just the ones that are anticlimactic or yeah, just I don't really care about their death scenes at all. Man, I picked some really long words. You can't even read that. Well, you, you know what it says. And finally, the last category is death should fear me. These are the ones that I think I personally might survive because I'm more aware of my surroundings. You know, you see some wind indoors with no windows open. It, it death's coming for you. So just to be a little bit more aware, you know. Technically no death in this franchise is escapable, right? It's a cycle, it's always gonna come back around even if you cheat the system, but I'm just going with it anyway. Let's just pretend that some of these are survivable. So these deaths will be in order of movie and po mostly in order of when the deaths take place in the movie. So you can skip around if you want to. They're all in order in case you haven't seen them. Obviously spoilers for all Final, Des Final Destination movies. First up, we have Todd Wagner, a very tragic death. However, I feel like there was a way to escape it. So I'm gonna put him in Death Should Fear Me because I genuinely think it was survivable. I under, again, I recognize that these deaths are not survivable generally because death is an entity. I get it. 
but just for today's video we're gonna pretend that some are and I think he could have survived that obviously he's in distress but I don't know I feel like he could have uh, tried harder to put his leg out or something Terry Cheney getting hit by a bus not a horrible way to die especially if you die instantly but that's not really a guarantee right uh, again this one is gonna go and <laughs> death should fear me maybe that's just gonna be the popular category in this video there's always one that gets overloaded um, I'm only saying that because I mentioned come on come on being aware of my surroundings I think had she no, like seen her surroundings a little bit better, she would have known not to step into the road at that exact point in time. Oh God, Valerie Luton, the most torturous death scene of all. And this is actually my favorite death scene in the whole franchise because it's just so dragged out and you're not, this is one where it's like, you're not sure how they're gonna die but it's suspenseful the whole way through versus later in like Found Destination 4, for example, where they're just so excessive with the death scenes that you lose tension. This one, she is in misery the whole time. So it's a great death scene in my opinion. And for her, because it was so dragged out and prolonged and just it's so much stress, I'm gonna put it in premonition, please. I think dying in an airplane crash would probably be better than how she died <laughs> because an airplane, you'll die pretty quickly either by being, you know, exposure in the wind if you fly out of the plane or you'll hit the ground, you won't feel anything or you'll have a heart attack on the way down. Either way, plane crash is probably better. Billy Hitchcock with a good old decapitation. Great way to die in my opinion. Uh, he, he never saw it coming, you know, he died very fast. Um, so not bad. I'm gonna put his death though in New Fear Unlocked because I don't know about you, but I used to live by train tracks. I still kind of do live by the train tracks. I can hear it every now and again but I would walk along the train tracks when I was in high school and every time I see something on the train track, I get really paranoid because of this scene. So I think for me personally, it was a new fear unlocked. <laughs> Carter Horton, uh, don't like his death at all. It's just a billboard situation. Um, unmemorable, I think. Oh. Alex Browning, God, why does Final Destination do this to their main characters? They make their deaths the worst. Like, why are the people who have the premonitions, their death scenes are like the absolute worst. We can't even, this one, we don't even see him die. We don't even get to see his death. It happens in between movies. And it's about falling brick, a brick. Really, that's the best you could come up with, a story for Alex Browning, who was the one to have the premonition. Come on, I'm sorry, but his death makes me very angry. So we're putting him in unmemorable. Wish it weren't the case. Character-wise, he's great. Uh, death, no. Evan Lewis. Uh, this one, I don't even think it was a new Fear Unlocked because he technically didn't die this way, but the garbage disposal, right? Uh, that, I think, has always been a fear for most people is putting their hands in a garbage disposal that it'll miraculously turn on. Um, but his death, honestly, the way he actually dies with the pole and the, the fire escape is kind of lame, if you ask me. But I think overall, it's a new fear. I think... It's not even like a new fear, but I think if people hadn't thought about the garbage disposal thing in a while, this reminded them. And the fire escape thing. I don't have fear of that because I don't live in a city or anywhere that has fire escapes. So I don't really care about fire escape ladders. Maybe if I lived somewhere where they did, it would scare me that I would fall and it would fall on top of me and um, punch a hole through my head. I don't know. Tim Carpenter. Now I know what you guys are thinking because this is a dentist scene, but technically nothing actually happens to his teeth. So for me, it's not as traumatic. I have a fear of the dentist. So this isn't as traumatic. The glass falling and how he actually dies. Again, I feel like it'd be kind of fast. So it's not the worst death, but I am going to put it in excessive because not only is his death over the top with like the dentist stuff, it, you know how death does. It tries to fake you out a million different ways to think that they're gonna die in different ways, um, but also unrealistic. I just don't think that that would actually happen. And so that category of excessive is now going to be encapsulating the unrealistic deaths as well. Nora Carpenter, the most frustrating, oh my God, the most frustrating death in the whole entire franchise. I just, makes me angry. One of my favorites, I think it's a great death, um, but this one, I have to put it in death should fear me. Cause girl, you need to be aware right you're on the phone and they're like the man with hooks and you see the man and somehow there's a fumbling going on and it's like i feel like she could have uh escaped that somehow i know you're trapped in the elevator with the man with hooks but like 
I just, she was a little bit um, stupid in that. <laughs> oh my God, Kat Jennings' death was so intense with the airbag and the, oh, I know exactly where this is going. All of um, Final Destination 2 created new fears, so that's definitely going up there. Obviously, it created the fear of logging trucks, of being behind a logging truck, which happens at the beginning of the movie, obviously, and with her death, having the pole through the back of the head, no thank you. I don't know if you can hear that lawnmower, but we're just gonna push on through until it gets really loud. Rory Peters, a uh, great death scene, I think. It's actually really, really cool. However, a little bit unrealistic. So maybe if barbed wire was flying at you that fast, like from an explosion, it would pierce your entire body but I have to put it in excessive. I just don't know if that would actually happen. It's one of my favorites, so I feel bad because it is such an effective scene, but I don't think it would happen that way, so. Clear Rivers. Again, main character. Well, is she a main character? She's like a side character in both movies, but still. One of the main, she's the only remaining character from the first movie, and she dies like that like really just in an explosion in the building. Obviously she had tried to escape death all these, I don't wanna say all these years, all this time and in the end was unsuccessful because death will always find a way. But I gotta put it in uh, unmemorable because it was, I don't like the way she dies, I'm sorry. All right, Brian Gibbons, how did he die? Oh yeah, the explosion, the barbecue. Uh, again, pretty fast way to die, I assume. I don't really know, um, but since I didn't recall right away when I saw his face, we're gonna put him in unmemorable. It just happens so fast, you know? There needs to be like a, um, a middle ground between excessive buildup and no buildup, right? Good old Ashley and Ashlyn. Obviously this has to go <laughs> to you know which category, new fear unlocked. I think this made a lot of people afraid of tanning beds, which good, you should be. Stop going to tanning beds. Stop tanning. I will die on that hill. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm glad that they created that fear, honestly, because it's a horrible thing to do to your skin. I never have been in a tanning bed, so I personally didn't have a fear of it because I knew I would never go into a tanning bed but I know generally for the world, this created a brand new fear. Frankie Cheeks, uh, a little bit unrealistic, uh, fast way to die. I guarantee he felt nothing, um, but I don't know. I'm going to put this one in death should fear me. Again, being aware of your surroundings. They tried warning him, right? They tried warning him and he just was unaware. And I feel like if he was more aware and realized who was behind him in the drive-thru, he would have survived. Louis Romero. Uh, I'm gonna, I know where I'm gonna put this. I'm gonna put you in excessive, again with the buildup. The buildup was too much in this, you know? It's building so much tension that we lose some tension, right? We think so many things are going to happen. Um, so that one, that death is a little bit excessive for me. Also the way he died was just like a little too much. Erin Ulmer, RIP, she's, I uh, love her, love her character so much. I wanted to be her in high school, I mean look at her the aesthetic, her hair, her makeup, I just love her. Anyway, her death was tragic, and I i wish I had a top tier for this one because it's one of my favorites as well, um, but I think I'll just put it in new fear unlocked. I don't know if a nail gun would penetrate your skull like that all the way through your to your face. Um, horrible way to die. Maybe the roller coaster would have been better for her because she probably would have died on impact after the fall, um, but I'm gonna put it in new fear because I think maybe, at least for me, it made us a little bit more uh, tentative around nail guns. Her partner in crime, Ian McKinley, um, I don't really like his death, to be honest. So him as a character was really good, actually. I really like him, but I think I'm gonna put it in unmemorable. I, it's just not my favorite, and it is memorable in the sense that like, you know what happened to him right away, but it's just, I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't like it. Now, Julie Christensen uh, dies in the train with her sister and Kevin, as we know. Um, but her death in general, though, was kind of unmemorable. I'm not gonna lie. So she's going in that category as well. I might have to start overlapping that category. Who would have thought that that one would be uh, full? Because I didn't think that there were that many unmemorable deaths. Okay, so next is Perry Malinowski, Impaled. 
not a fan. Um, uh, unmemorable, we'll put it there. Kevin Fisher, horrible. I honestly probably would have taken how he died. Well, how he dies on the roller coaster is very similar to how he died on the train, I think, with the window collapsing and him just being like grinded to a pulp on the wall. So they're pretty equal in how much pain he probably felt. But I will put his death in New Fear Unlocked because I feel not necessarily like through the window, but the fact that the subway derailed, I feel like a lot of, at least for me, I would be terrified to ride a subway. I've never ridden a subway in my life or a train underground or anything like that. So I would definitely be a little bit nervous, especially now that I've seen Escape Room 2. Like Wendy Christensen dies by getting hit by the train again. We don't even get to see her death really, right? It's the thing with the main character. It's like they can't finish it off properly for us. We don't get to see it. Uh, so I don't really, I don't really enjoy her death. You'd think it'd go with Kevin, but I'm gonna put her in unmemorable. I'm sorry. All right, now we're getting into the worst Final Destination movie in this, and this is what is going to fill up that category of unmemorable because I'm not gonna lie, I hardly remember any of the deaths that even happen in this. There's like two that stand out to me. I, ugh, I hate this movie. I don't even wanna include it. I don't even wanna talk about it. Cynthia Daniels, how did, how she die a hood being pierced in half? I don't know. We're putting, I mean, we're starting off in the unmemorable. Can we rearrange anything? No, I, those are all unmemorable to me. So we're gonna keep them. Um, it's gonna be a full category though. Hate her death. I hate it with the tire. Um, do I dare say be aware of your surroundings and death should fear me because I would not have hesitated to run as far away from that place as possible. And they just run right outside and stop. So no, you keep on going. There's bound to be more explosions and things happening. You just don't want to be in the vicinity. So death should fear me on that one because I would, I would run. I'd probably die some other way, of course, but I would not die from a flying tire. Uh, Carter Daniels, don't know, no idea. I think he gets hit or hit by an ambulance or is that someone else? <laughs> Honestly, couldn't tell you. I think he gets hit by a tow truck or something or tow truck explodes, something like that. Samantha Lane. Oh, this this girl, this death is my least favorite death of all time in Found Us Nation. It's so bad, it's so bad. This is why I created the category of excessive. Like this is the pinnacle of being obnoxious. This death is so annoying and the freaking rock in her eye. Like that wouldn't kill you. It's unrealistic, unrealistic, excessive, hate it. Um, Again, no idea. <laughs> I know there's gonna be people commenting like, how can you even make this list if you forget how they even died? Mm. I don't care about Final Destination 4 that much, to be honest. Um, so we're just gonna start stacking over here. He is one of the ones I mentioned before. I just don't remember which uh, white man was killed which way. So forgive me. But I do remember Hunt Winorski. This, oh my gosh, <laughs> his death is the most outrageous in the whole franchise where I think it's not even like horrifying, it's just funny. It's funny with the pool, new fear unlocked, hands down. I mean, I think it's honestly based in reality. I remember in, high, in my high school, people were talking about something that happened similar to that and I don't wanna go into details because I'll get demonetized, um, but new fear, 100%, like don't put me anywhere near a pool drain. Jonathan Groves dies by a bathtub falling on him through the ceiling at the hospital. I want to put this in excessive just because I just don't think that that would be possible in a hospital setting. Like the floors would bound to support the weight of a bathtub being full of water. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't think also that an old man would just be left unattended with a running giant um, physical therapy bath. I don't know, just all of it seems unnecessary. <laughs> so it's going in excessive. Okay, so technically I think the next couple are premonitions and not reality, but I wanted to include them because I think that they're better than the way that they actually die, which would just wrap this video up real fast. So, or this section of the video up real fast. So Janet Cunningham, movie theater, explosion, new fear. I remember going to a theater once and it was so embarrassing, but there was like something coming down and it looked like giant torches. I can't, ex oh sorry, I just hit the mic. I can't explain it, but I was so terrified that there was gonna be some kind of fire. Like getting trapped in a fire in a movie theater, 
or something else in a movie theater. I'm just terrified. Why do I go to the theater like every week? I don't know. It's just one of my phobias is being trapped in a theater in some way, especially in that situation. And then we have Lori Milligan who is in the escalator situation. Obviously, uh, this is a reality that actually happened tragically, um, but new fear because I think it made a lot of people really paranoid about being around escalators. So technically they didn't die like that. They died by truck. I just called it truck. I, <laughs> this is like three people's death. So I I don't even know. Uh, death should fear me, I guess, because I mean, I'm always aware of like cars around me and one of my fears in life is a car driving into a building that I'm in and taking me out. I used to live on a corner unit in an apartment and I was so paranoid that someone would just drive into my bedroom because my bed was near a window and I would just die like that. So I'm always thinking about things like that and would not die like that because I will be out of there so freaking fast. <laughs> All right, now that that horrible movie is over, let's move on to the final destination, the final destination. Candace Hooper, um, possibly new fear unlocked for gymnasts. Not for me personally. I'm n You're not gonna see me on a balance beam. Not gonna be doing that anytime soon. I forgot how she died in the premonition. The thing about Final Destination 5 that I really like about the premonition is that there are different ways that people die. There's still different ways that people die in the like the plane and the roller coaster and things like that. But something about the bridge and all the different ways that they showed how they would die in that accident was so good. And I wanted to include them honestly in this video because it I love those death scenes, like the oil, hot oil spilling on him and things like that. Horrible, horrifying, but I didn't include any other premonitions except for four, just because I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting with number four. But I really like the beginning of five and I don't specifically remember how Candace died in that one. Um, but I like her death, but I will put it in excessive just because there's so much going on and makes it unrealistic. Almost would put it in death should fear me, but I'm not a gymnast, I don't know. Maybe you would not see a screw on your balance beam. Oh, Isaac Palmer, one of the worst deaths in the franchise, in my opinion. I hate it, I think it's so ridiculous. Also hate him, so his death was kind of satisfying because we don't like him, right? He's going in excessive because I absolutely can't stand it. Again, it's one of those, oh gosh. It's one of those situations where they build it up too much to where it's like, all right, well now I really can't anticipate anything now because you've faked me out with everything. So like, I don't even care at this point. Olivia Castle, also don't like her deaths. See, I like Final Destination 5, but the deaths are not great. Um, some of them are, you know, memorable and I really like the story and the prequel aspect of it but the deaths just aren't that good and her death is no exception. I will put it, cause I have to be realistic, right? I will put it in New Fear Unlocked because honestly, yeah, I think that that uh, would make a lot of people afraid. I actually had a Google because I'm like, okay, well this is a prequel. It came out in like 90, in the late 90s. Was LASIK even a thing in the 90s? So I had to like look it up, it was. But I just don't think that you would die like, well, technically she didn't die like that. It was just burning into her face and her hand and things like that. And she actually fell to her death, which is ironic because she fell to her death well, actually, yeah, she fell into the water in the bridge collapse, so similar. Maybe her death would have been better in the premonition. I only have one, there's <laughs> Valerie Luton in, only one in premonition, please. I guess every everyone else um, died fine. I, I, Roy Carson technically should not have died, right? He was not on the bridge when it collapsed, so he was not meant to die. I'm including him, even though he wasn't part of Death's plan, because he was a death in the movie and it was due to someone else and then he evaded death. So yeah, Roy Carson got a nice hook in the jaw. I honestly, I don't know where to put it. I think I'm gonna put it in Death Should Fear Me because again, you're at your work, you should be aware of everything happening. Maybe, I mean, obviously he couldn't escape it, but it all happened so fast. Um, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put him there. Okay, Dennis Lapman, he's the one with the hot oil. Definitely not putting him in premonition, please, because I think that way to die is probably the worst in the, in, in the whole franchise. Like that would be the worst way to die is the hot oil or asphalt poured on you. And he actually dies by a wrench. It's just kind of meh. I'm gonna put him in unmemorable because I just don't care about his death that much. I don't think it was that creative or that good. Peter Friedkin, uh, he gets impaled by, it looks like a trident. Obviously it's like a meat skewer. Um, don't really care. Uh, he, he, it was nice to see him die, I guess. We don't really like him, but unmemorable. 
I don't care about his death. I just think it's, again, uncreative. And technically, he didn't die by death's hand, right? He died because of another character stabbing him, so because he was trying to kill Molly, so he would be skipped, you know, you've seen it. Anyway, let's talk about Molly Harper. How does she, oh yeah, on the plane. Yeah, she gets uh, cut in half by the plane wing. I think obviously I have to put her in premonition, please, because doesn't she survive? And then somehow she just ends up on a plane and that's too bad. <laughs> I think Molly was the only one that survived in the premonition in that movie. So obviously I think she would, she would prefer the premonition. And then finally, Sam Bluton, who dies in the plane crash of Flight 180, where the yeah, other, you know, in the first Final Destination movie, yeah. Um, because he, his death kind of represents the first movie's premonition, I'm going to stack him on top of New Fear Unlocked, because I think, I, a lot of people have fear of flying. I had a fear of flying for a long time. No thanks to Final Destination. It definitely uh, made it worse because that it's horrifying to think about. So I try not to, um, but yeah, obviously I feel like this franchise kind of reinstated a lot of people's fears of things they were already afraid of. It just makes you think about them a little bit too much. All right, well, that is my Final Destination deaths ranked. I did not anticipate this layout. Honestly, I thought it would be way more even with the tiers that I created. Um, premonition, please, we got two. I don't know if anyone else should go in there. You let me know your thoughts on that, uh, how you would rank them. Please tell me your favorite Final Destination deaths of all time down below and your least favorite. Let's make it fun. Let's be a little negative too. Why not? But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you soon. Bye.